Hello, everybody. Good Hello, evening. Hi. Good evening, Shruti. Good evening, learners. Very good evening, everybody. Good evening, Shubham. Welcome to our today's live. How are you all? Okay, we are receiving a lot of highs. Hi, everybody. I hope this evening finds you well, and I am hoping that you're super duper excited for our today's live session. Well, Hello, I'm excited. Hola. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, Sachin. Good evening. Very good evening, Sachin. Okay. Yes. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Yes. So another evening, another Sunday evening. I uh, I must tell you, Vishali, ma'am, that uh, Sunday has become one of my favorite days of the week because every Sunday we get to meet amazing yet exciting learners who are there to share their love, who are there to ask their doubts, put up a lot of queries, and we are here to resolve all your doubts. So. To all those who don't know me, I am Shruti Sharma, a communication coach and a language trainer here at English Yari. And today, along with me, I have one of our exceptional tutors, Ms. Vishali. Uh, who better than Ms. Vishali can help us today? She'll definitely uh, hear all the doubts and the queries you have. So feel free to ask all your doubts throughout the chat box and we'll keep on taking one after the other. Oh, Vishali, ma'am, people are saying hi to you. <laughs> yes, I can see. Hello. A very good evening to all the language enthusiasts. I welcome you here. Thank you so much for joining today. It's, again, um, it's very wonderful to have everybody here. I can see so many learners who have mm -hmm. been joining English Shari. And uh, not only with me, but also I've seen these learners doing super well in terms of the YouTube channels too. And I think they have also joined with us. It's again, um, a lot of privilege and a pride moment for me as a tutor because my students have also joined in. And what else can make your Sunday evening better than this? Yes, and uh, I, as I always say that Sunday evening is super special to me because this evening holds a distinctive significance as we all come live, discuss some important topics. And I must tell you, dear learners, that the topic that we've chosen for today is one of the hot topics that you have been requesting for a really long time. So we are here to assist you. And the topic for discussion is different techniques to master your vocabulary to ace your fluency. I hope you're super excited for it. Okay, yes. All right, I Vishali, ma'am, I can clearly see that we have a lot <laughs> many learners who have been taking <laughs> sessions with you. Absolutely. I can see Mr. Kushankur. He is a very diligent learner. He has been putting his meticulous efforts in learning English. And also, uh, he's been keeping the consistency. That's, again, the major key, an effective key, which is going to make people great orator, not only in terms of their casual context, but also for formal front too. And I can mm -hmm. see so many people joining this today's session. Um, it's, it just makes me super excited and charged for the session altogether. <laughs> okay, so with this igniting spirit ahead, let's dwell deeper into today's topic. As I just said, the topic is how you can master, how can you boost your vocabulary. So who better than Miss Vishali can help us in this because she's known for her exceptional and incapable uh, skills whenever she comes and whenever she speaks. I, I must tell you the kind of enthusiasm and charming personality she holds. I'm just a fan of her. So I'm sure today ma'am is going to help you uh, by giving her great hacks to improve uh, your spoken English. Uh, well, thank you so much, Shruti. You have been modest uh, again because uh, I will try my level best to help all the learners to engage today's session with the uh, most fruitful experience. Let's see mm -hmm. how much they are excited. And I really want to say one thing before diving into this uh, session that uh, today's session needs to be very interactive and engaging. For that, sure. of course, offering cooperation is required for all the people who have joined in. So feel free to ask questions, to clear in doubt, you may arise because yeah, we are keeping our eyes hooked up to the YouTube channel, comment section. Yes. And again, mm -hmm. learning is a collaborative process. And let's just make it more enjoyable for all the learners today. 
Absolutely. And as Ms. Vishali said that it has to be engaging, it has to be interactive. So feel free to put your doubts. We'll keep on acknowledging them. And uh, we are sure that today we are going to address most of your doubts, most of your queries. So just keep on typing. And to all those who are joining us for the first time, it's our fourth time that we are coming live. So in case you missed any session, feel free to go out and check our YouTube handle because all the videos are up there. Uh, your learning should never stop. So as you said that you want to improve your vocabulary and you want to learn some tips and tricks. So your wish is our command. We are here and let's see. Okay. Now, so firstly, uh, Mr. Shali, first things first, I want to know from you that as you have been a teacher yourself for a really long time, whenever we say the word vocabulary, people have strong notions that they need to cram everyday new words, use Absolutely. typical English jargons. And if they're not able to keep up well, then uh, they feel they have limited vocabulary. So what you feel should be the exact approach to work or to master their spoken English? Um, well, to begin with, I must say this one thing. Um, as a learner, I have been always intrigued to learn as many good words, new words as I come across. It's just not, of course, in terms of the language apprehension, but also in terms of whatever you see, whatever you hear. So um, it has been altogether a, a wonderful journey for me to learn every word I come across. And this one idea behind those words had been, that's what's the meaning of it? How can I use it in the sentences? Because that's, again, very important step. Because I have come across so many learners. They have been using the vocabulary, which is quite good to hear. However, when it comes to the usage, it's somehow derailing on the path, right? So when it comes to using specific vocabulary in terms of the sentences, it needs this right approach. So I think today is the best day to how to use these right approaches in terms of mm -hmm. daily communication. It would be the great thing to start with. Okay, absolutely. You said it right. And here we have a comment, beautiful comment by Shubham. Shubham says, Vishali ma'am is my favorite tutor. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> we have got great personalities today. Okay, Ms. Vishali, you used very important term here and I want everyone to have view over it. At times, you try to learn or cram, I would say, a good word. And then you feel wherever I can fit in, let me just incorporate, let me introduce that word. For example, I still remember there was a learner and we were discussing the other ways of saying I'm angry. You know, people say I'm angry, I'm mad, what else you can say? Then in the discussion we learned, you can also use irate. You know, the anger and the aggression feeling when you're super irritated by a fact, then you can say irate. Now, because he learned this word, now every time whenever he was angry, he, was, he started saying, I'm irate. Now, this is a strong feeling. <laughs> right. <laughs> right <absolutely. laughs> so not always you can incorporate. That's how um, I truly understand that you said right context plays an important role. So uh, how can we learn this? How can we understand that this is a word and how you can use it? Please guide us. Um, yes. So uh, let me just begin this with the one small or short anecdote that, you know, daily I come across a budding linguist and especially at English Shari who wish to take a leap towards endless your vocabulary. They keep a certain handful of words ready, which is really great. However, when somehow they neglect to how to put them appropriately into a sentence, that's again a certain task of challenge. So I won't name any here, however, but this is one common mistake I have been able to notice among all the learners. So um, this one right approach to master the vocabulary would be something like a strategy. So one, I would definitely tell the learners to start with visualizing. So when you hear a word, you start to have that understanding in terms of the literal meaning. And then when you visualize that word in terms of, you know, a picture or uh, some kind of, you know, um, like an instance, for instance, they come across so many, you know, uh, movies and also the instances in daily life. So if they visualize certain things, they will understand how to use them, uh, these words in a better context. So again, if they would adopt these effective strategies, it will be really great to how to begin their journey of using the words rightly. 
Yes, I have to agree. Okay, Naval here is asking us that, ma'am, what are your favorite techniques to learning and remembering new words? Okay, so first one is just what ma'am suggested: visualize. Whenever there's any right. new word you want to add on in your vocabulary list, visualize or create a situation. When can I use it? I still remember when I started learning this language and when I was trying to understand or uh, learn some good words. I would firstly think of that word. For example, the word is a scrum. Now, whenever there's something tasty, we end up saying, "Right, scrumptious." Now, this word is typical. When can I use it? Ask yes. yourself. Maybe whenever I taste something good, or mm -hmm. let's suppose you 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 know this word, or you're trying to learn this word. How about you're also visualizing what kind of things or where I can use these sentences? For example, next time, whenever your mother serves you any food, you say it scrumptious. Yes. Right? Or next time when you go to any restaurant. You can also use that. Try using it right. over and over again, and then you will have it on your fingertips. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I would definitely agree to every word Shruti have just spoken now because the more the number of times they are going to use them in daily practices, the more it is going to become one of your absolute favorite words. And this is one strategy again. I tell it to all the people out there. Have you heard certain, you know, TEDx talk speakers? speaking out certain set of words or maybe in casual context also you must come across you might be coming across people who are very effective speakers and they are very fluent in english they are quite comfortable so how do they go about it they just start having these handful of words as their major pick and then whenever it comes to using them they start to pick that word daily and on the very onset while they are on the stage they use that word and we people end up saying they have a very good vocabulary so you know this is how exciting and yes, fascinating yes. it is that people are using vocabulary in terms of daily life that is the only way how you can come and come these like how these words can come into play right hmm truly important so first whosoever is taking note first thing first <laughs> visualize second right. incorporate that word here and there instead of having 10 words that you'll not use ever get at least two words in hand but also visualize where i can use and how right. i can use the word for example i still remember whenever i used to learn or any word which is sad let's suppose a melancholic now the deep yes. pensive feeling is melancholic mm -hmm. so i used to remember the last time i got my maths grade maybe that's when it was a melancholic expression so visualize those emotions as ma'am said secondly learn the right concept otherwise right. you'll keep on using these words and people would get confused what he or she is trying to say absolutely so be yeah. a great speaker Mm -hmm. right okay so here i have a quick uh, deal for all our learners so you don't have to stop writing things down today we have come up with a short and quick activity if you have joined us again then you must know last time we have done one activity where we did formal versus informal words and again we have a short activity today with you so stay tuned till the end because we are going to have a lot of fun and mr vishali is going to practically help us improve our vocabulary am i right vishali ma'am Absolutely, absolutely, Shruti. With this, I would like to add another strategy, which is coming to my mind times and again. It is the strategy of using prefixes and suffixes. For instance, wow. let's correct the mistake. Like people had been using this one appropriate phrase, which is not appropriate, but it has to be made appropriate. So it is rejoin again. Would you please rejoin again? Or you know, uh, it is like. revisit again so it's not something correct i would like to say there's this bit of error we can rectify it's let's rejoin or visit again right these words has to be understood in a manner that literal meaning has to be noted now so just like that um, yes. i would like to give this another idea people have been using this sentence i am a very shy person they are not shy rather in the literal meaning they should have said something else for example i am a very reserved kind of person so again the literal meaning comes into play and here the strategy like i've mentioned suffix and prefix it has to be made sure that you're using in the proper context right 
Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So as just ma'am said, that focus on sometimes prefix and suffix to understand the root meaning. For example, if you're learning any uh, prefix called re, re means again, reread, read again, rebuild, build again. So this way you'll able to understand words and you'll have a bunch of words just by few prefix. You just have to learn right. the prefix. Whenever you add that prefix, the word would be clear to you rebuild Absolutely. restart right. you know uh, regain all these things are about re which means True. again same goes with uh, suffix sometimes i i think even in the last live we were telling that uh, people use let's suppose you know file file means love now mellow file is music lover a bibliophile is right. uh, the one who loves books so just learn any suffix or prefix this way you'll be able to understand vocabulary on a deeper note which is majorly right. important Absolutely, absolutely. And I think this is this one thing everybody has been learning since uh, through forever, since through ages and for, since forever, that logic, you know, logic means study and they add up with hmm. biology, biology, geology, right? These words has to be summed up in certain manner. So I think I can see something in the chat box in the YouTube channel that which says that how can we learn certain set of words? So it's just yes. practice and yes, literal meaning has to be learned until unless you're not sure about a word's meaning, you won't be able to use that in proper context. So I think uh, at the end of the day, a person should be able to note down at least three words, like best of three, like we do in the hmm. subjects and three words yes. on a daily basis that should be their absolute favorite. Because again, hmm. handful of words will always make you is the communication and conversations. True. Here I have a similar question. I think uh, Mr. Nawal has asked this. Uh, he says that, ma'am, do you have any tips for overcoming common vocabulary challenges? Example, pronunciation, confuse, confusion between similar words. I think here he is talking about the homophones. You know, yes. Similar sounds, yet different meanings. Stare versus stare. Uh, the right. spelling is different, but the way we pronounce it's exactly the same. Right. right. So what kind of tips would you like to give for uh, homophones, homonyms? Um, well, if like, for example, I would just like to go about with, uh, you know, sight and sight. Again, sight. So I'm talking about C-I-T-E, S-I-G-H-T and S-I-T-E. So people, when they listen to certain set of words, they are unable to understand. So the visualization strategy again comes into play because sight sighting of something sight s-i-g-h-t again the site whatever you see and the site mm. website mm. so when they understand how to visualize a word they will be able to make that very crux of the idea into their minds and once they delve into taking the leap towards making that vocabulary a basic thing into their communication on a daily basis it would help mm. them more mm. so again it's just that how they come up with the idea of homophones because you know how they sound but at the same time the spellings are different so not just picture memory but also certain letter memory can be there mm -hmm. yes makes sense and uh, here we have uh, one more comment by rebound resilient ruby if i'm saying that right as a beginner we should use simple vocabulary or add on some advanced words in the initial days and i think she has asked a great question um, yes ruby as Definitely. a beginner first of all try to have a good hang of the language if you are just going or you're bumping into the different vocabulary words this can be uh, hectic secondly right. Putting on vocabulary requires extra effort. Right? It cannot happen that, okay, I'm just reading books and I'm not able to get vocabulary. While reading books, it's more of uh, the passive practicing of the words. I still uh, hear a lot of people saying, Vishali, when they come in session and say, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts or audiobooks lately, and I do watch a lot of movies, yet I'm unable to pick up some great words. See, uh, you need to understand whenever, as a tutor, I suggest anyone to read books or maybe watch any movie. The reason behind that is to understand this language well, to understand how sentence construction works or how subject verb agreement or how you can better explain yourself, not just for your vocabulary. However, Absolutely. if you are learning anything, if you are able to get any new word, it's okay. That should come naturally to you. Don't put on extra vocabulary words initially. Start slow, start steady. And once you feel now I'm to a level where I can manage new words, 
then you should add in but you have to say vishali ma'am very rightly said ms shruti that you know when it comes to language comprehension a person needs to understand that every language has these four set of rules listening speaking reading and writing we can skip writing for now but these three are major tools so when it comes to using these tools all together in one way let's just start by understanding listening so if you listen to easy words first pick up the easy words that's again the basic thing has to be start with the basic idea that means easy yes. once we start on from the easy we can shift on to intermediate advanced level so slowly and gradually because um, how the language works organically and at the same time you're comfortable with the language it's what is going to matter at the end of the day so when it comes to language learning i think people can start focusing on simple words first and then they can proceed towards delving into understanding and picking up on that specific word which again can be their favorite Yes. yes always understand dear learners that the reason we say that improve your vocabulary or get good hang of vocabulary words is because when you are out of vocabulary you end up repeating things over and over again so it's better you use different words now different vocabulary words or typical vocabulary words it's a huge difference the basic idea of learning english as a language is to be good at communication at last why we are communicating to express our ideas in simple terms So it's right. okay if you keep your terms simple, but make sure that you sound eloquent whenever you speak. Right, right, absolutely, Ms. Shruti. I think um, you know at the end of the day, when people come across certain uh, new learners, they end up saying that he or she is using very basic language. However, it comes to certain people that there are certain good orators who are able to manage with good vocabulary words. but when it comes to english language or beat any language in general i think the expression of idea and how to put it across has our word been understood by the other person that is again the only thing which is important and crucial in terms of language and i can see in the chat box that people are asking that how to build confidence in english and also they face certain complications and challenges and struggle whenever they are talking to a person to whom they feel they the other person is superior to them and they feel somehow inferior to that very person so again yes. i would like to <laughs> say this one thing have that faith in your heart that you will be able to speak because confidence comes from within you do not need any extra external validation or validation from any out, outside source it just comes from within naturally it, that's why we are able to speak it times and again or likely we have been emphasizing that if a person has a comfort in this language they will be able to ace it however if there is any doubt they can clear up of course there are mental english shari <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and i think chinmay has asked a similar question she said that whenever there is anyone superior at my work i forget simple words as well so same uh, as miss vishali said first of all my sweet or small suggestion to you uh, would be chinmay sometimes you need to just initiate you know they say first task is or the first step is the difficult or the most typical task because you have a lot of self uh, doubt will i be able to speak or what if i fumble what if i forget everything so mm. try mastering the art of small talk chinmay whenever you meet any senior of course english is not uh, a one night game or where I, uh, we can give you a magical potion that okay drink it at tomorrow you'll be right. super fluent there's no such thing called overnight success so my uh, small suggestion to you would be that next time whenever you come across any senior first of all tell your brain that this time i'm going to start at least a small talk maybe asking them how they are doing today if not a big talk initiate tomorrow maybe if today you've just asked one question tomorrow you can have two or three questions small talk includes you ask people about their day their mood what they are up to or what their plans may be as we are on weekend today what are the plans they have for the weekend something like that or maybe if you're talking to your superior you can ask them anything relevant to the upcoming project slow and steady wins the race so try maybe one sentence two sentence and slowly steady you'll have this confidence within as miss vishali said that you don't have to lead by validations you don't have to seek for motivation outside motivation resides inside always so let it flow and sparkle the magic of your spoken english <laughs> very rightly said miss ruti it's something 
uh, amazing to understand as as a budding learner also of course if i may have to add in one thing everybody is a learner right if we end up as a person who's not a learner how can we improve ourselves everybody has to learn more and more each day but at the same time a person should understand that even if they are budding learners they should take that leap of faith that once in a while if they have that certain thing on their mind for example acing the language they can just start mm-hmm. up with this mm-hmm. one simple strategy if they want to start up having a conversation with someone who, to whom they feel superior they are superior the other person is superior and they are feeling inferior or inferiority complex they can start with this one strategy one is to three i always go about with this it's a beautiful okay. strategy mm-hmm. because you know uh, why our teachers has been emphasizing as one point focus so we have to eradicate all the thoughts to the back of our mind or maybe to make them open to the atmosphere which is again infinite so they need to understand one thing which you are speaking they has to go automatically outside they has to utter but at the same time they should be ready with three things and again visualization will come into the process and like we have already mentioned so far that there are so many strategies we can keep ourselves and once we start brushing them off we'll be able to manage with good communication and language mm-hmm. itself mm-hmm. is an art a person can only master the skill by practicing it so practicing. i think that's yes. very yes. rightly we, i have to mention people should have this one thought in their mind that a mentor can always help you guide well a person who is somehow seeking out this one you know hesitant in their heart that will i be able to do that or they're restricting themselves from being into that field the zone they can always start up by taking some external help and once they get a good mentor i think life is getting pretty simple for them happy go lucky then. Then. <laughs> right right absolutely okay here suraj has asked a really important question and i think this has to be heard by everyone who has joined us live today he says that if i use a difficult word or synonyms and the other person is not able to understand that word at that time how should i make them understand suraj we just said uh, initially that we are working on our language so that we can be clear with the message that we want to share what if you are a ceo of a company and you are using typical jargons but your employees are not able to understand you by the end are you there to flaunt your skills or are you there to explain them or give them a right direction so to all of you i've seen people committing this mistake endlessly that whenever they want to improve their spoken english they get a lot of words use them firstly get your audience right always use these words when you know that the other person would be able to understand me otherwise sometimes your language can make the other person feel inferior and that's not our motive is exactly right suraj so next time if you want to use good vocabulary words use them never stop yourself but always ask yourself was i clear when i shared this the person was able to understand what i said or it just went away so if your message is right if your message is concise then feel free to use synonyms feel free to use those words which can help you stand out differently i hope this answers your question <laughs> Okay now is the time is Vishali where we have to play a quick game with them and as i said so here are some guidelines uh miss vishali and i are going to give you some sentences some simple sentences and uh, as it's going to be a basic sentence you have to elevate that sentence by using some great vocabulary words let's see who's going to ace this round today so i am um, keeping my eyes on the comment section shruti i'm very excited to hear <laughs> from the people that how many words they have into and i think one thing we should mention it they are not supposed to google it whatever comes to their mind they should be able to put out from their google so i think this search yes. engine should start right away and not the search engine otherwise so yes mm. i think i'm very excited to give this very first sentence i think okay. people end up asking or saying that uh, give me a second or give me a minute what should be the alternative for this one um can we just start asking our learners who have joined the comment section sure section? yes so i'm repeating once again the challenge which miss vishali has brought up is at times whenever you want a break or let's suppose you are in a meeting and you receive a call uh, so you, what you say is please give me a, mi- a minute may i answer this call or something like that so what can be the alternative or advanced way of saying please give me a minute 
let's see. Let's see. Okay. I think, yes, I'm also keeping my eyes stick to mm -hmm. this comment section. I'm excited to hear from and see so many more and more vocabulary words if they have any. Because again, Chinmay says, never stop. just a minute. Okay. Um, okay. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see. Give me a few. Okay, what of you? <laughs> this is not uh, <laughs> yes. giving me any guidance. Please uh, rectify it up. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. People say, hold on. Give me a few. They Just can also mention something in terms of formal context. If by any chance they have to speak it out in terms of a person who is somehow in high position to them, or let's say they are the boss on the organization how can they say that uh, give me a minute or give me a second instead of that mm -hmm. what could be the better alternative i think i mm -hmm. am somehow expecting that break the barriers with kavaljeet says excuse me please okay sura says excuse vishal is saying just a minute mm -hmm. jt bhajan says just waiting okay, <laughs> okay. I think, uh, Vishali ma'am, now is the right time where you have to spill the beans and explain them what can be the better way of this sentence. Well, um, a very rightful phrase can be used here is, would you give me a moment? Would you give hmm. me a moment? Will you please give me a moment? I'll just get back to you. So this is how, in a very easy manner, they can ace the way how to say, give me a minute or give me a second, because literally that cannot be practical. So I think it would be uh, the best one how to go about with, instead of saying, give me a minute, give me a second, they can say, um, would you please hold on? Or would you please give me a moment? I'll get back to you. Or hmm. if you have any yes. Shruti, would you like to add some? Yeah, Rajan here says, can I put you on hold? See, this can be not said when you are talking to your boss. You cannot say, boss, can I put you on hold? Because that time, boss is your priority. You have to hear him out. So, um, first of all, I have a complaint to all my viewers. I'll tell you why. Last time when we came live and we explained you the business English words, we told you clearly that there are three magical words of English in business English. Could, should, would. Especially could and would are used when you have to appeal or when you have to request someone. So as Ms. Vishali said, be formal when you're asking this question. You can say, um, would you please hold for a minute uh, or anything like that. See, even Chinmay says, could you hold some time, please? So be formal, use some great words that can help you. That's what I would suggest. Right. And like you have mentioned, Shruti, um, we can simply say, would you please give me a minute? It's just by adding something very humble will make the sentence change the entire game. So it's just the right word, again, put into the basic appropriate manner. Mm -hmm. True that. Okay. And with this here, I have my second sentence for you. So I have heard people saying, this is very tasty. The food is very tasty. Maybe uh, the cheeseburger is very tasty. What else can be said when you have to compliment food? I think- So repeat it once think... again. Yes, yes you have mentioned, ahead. I think people have to avoid that using scrumptious here because they need to use something better. And I'm really expecting <laughs> yes. them to use better words to let's ace the language. And by the end of the session, mm. they'll at least have some handful of words to say instead of yummy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Vishu says, ma'am, uh, could you explain the situation where we can use wood? Could okay, all right. So they're asking us when they can use should, could, and would. Okay, simple things first. This is my favorite story. So I can bet you, after understanding the story, you'll never get confused where to use should, could, and would. Okay, so grab your pen and or maybe just be all ears to understand this out. Feel as if there are three siblings of a family: should, could, and would. Should is the eldest one of the family. Okay. You know how elders are? Elders are always there to give their suggestion, advice, or maybe their opinions. Do this, do that. So whenever you have to give any suggestion, whenever you give any advice or opinion, just you should. Your exams are nearby. You should study hard. <laughs> right? Maybe uh, you should visit the doctor next time or something like that. You should hit the books. Whereas when it comes to could, could is, I told you, the middle one of the family. So middle one is like a sandwich. Neither mom nor uh, the dad is taking care of the baby. So baby is just sandwiched. 
So fail, could is the past form of can. We, in the first segment, we use could when we explain the past abilities that you had, but now you've lost. For example, back in my childhood, I could paint well. Means earlier I had this ability, now I've lost it up. This is the first way. However, see, I just told you could is the middle one. Even could require some pocket money. So for a small request or to be modest or to be polite, we use could. Yes. Could you please <laughs> pass me the bottle? Could you tell me what to do in this project? How may I go ahead by it? So could is also used for this small appeal or request. However, here comes the third and uh, the foremost part, which we use would. As I told you, would is the youngest one of the family and youngest ones are the naughtiest one ever. I hope Ms. Vishali would agree. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> well, definitely, right. Yes. So uh, being the youngest one, you know, uh, how uh, kids are, they make castles in the air. I would do this or do that whenever you're not sure or you're talking about the hypothetical situations that we use would when i will become a prime minister i would change all the rules hey you're not the prime minister yet you're just visualizing that so then we use wood and now see wood is the youngest one even the youngest one require some money or maybe some goodies from the family so again wood is also used for requesting would you mind sitting here uh, would you prefer coffee to tea or something like that you can use? Am I right, ma'am? Absolutely, absolutely right. So, Shruti, I would just like to add this one thing, a pinch of flavor that, you know, uh, there are some instances where people had been very um, in a dilemma state. They were always confused to understand how to go about with could and would in terms of either possibility <sighs> or imagine hypothetical situations. So I think we should also put some light over this situation that could and would is to talk about situations that are possible. And at the same hmm. time, they could also go with imagine hypothetical situations. However, appropriate words has to be understood in terms of examples. So would hmm. you like to share some? Yes, I would. And before that, I want to tell you, ma'am, I'm just astonished with the fact, look at the kind of comments they have given us. We are, we yes, them with yes, a question. Right, oh. right, right. Oh, God. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Learn English with Akesh says delicious. Food is delicious. Vishal says yummy. Mm, luscious. Okay. Great. Uh, Naval says savory. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Someone is saying wow. <laughs> okay. And Mr. Vishnu says astounding. So I think um, astounding here could be used in certain other contexts. Will you agree with me, Mr. Shruti? Astounding yes. to me somehow what go with the meals and i think it would go with somehow the adjective for certain other situations in terms of using astonishing um this time i think i want to go with this so i would request um, mr um vishnu to write another word because i want to have more vocabulary words from his side because astounding is a very graceful word however yes, how to yes. use something better which could sound in terms of the meals or relate us with the idea of food that would make the entire statement go into a very right manner right mm -hmm. yes absolutely okay now we have received great comments so yes <laughs> all of you you have given great answers first of all so pat yourself at least you were able to say chirmay says mouth watering yes all of you are saying great great words now as we said scrum scrumptious was already mentioned by me so i want to count it up with <laughs> you people. you can say yummy of course you can say luscious palatable mouth watering then uh, lip smacking or uh, they're so delectable what not so it's always good next time whenever anyone comes with uh, the great taste or the, the, a new palate, make sure that you compliment them or you appreciate their efforts because it takes a lot to cook. Am I right, Mr. Charlie? Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, for continuing from where we left, Shruti, I think, um, let me just add one thing, how they can learn about should. So I always go with the letters. So uh, letter S starts with suggestions and letter S also goes with the should. So I think they can keep that in mind that S goes sure. with suggestions, S goes for should. So for uh, asking certain kind of, uh, like giving certain kind of suggestions or advice, they can use the word should. However, when it comes to certain kind of permissions and somehow um, invitations, they can also go back with the idea of using would. So invitations, invites, we, so we can do double we, that means what, and S letter can be used in terms of suggestions, right? 
True that. Okay, all right. Now, first of all, thank you so much. Every time, whenever we come with quick activities, you are there with a lot of comment sections. Uh, this live is all about sharing what actually can be done or what are the practical ways of improving your vocabulary. So as to conclude, I think, and Ms. Vishali, correct me if I forget any of the pointers because today you have welled us with so many takeaways from the <laughs> session. Now I need to make my notes after it. Okay, so first of all, today we learned that uh, go by simple words first only then uh, take a leap towards advanced English or I would say advanced words or typical words the basic idea is to be eloquent or be comfortable with the language right Absolutely. second visualization play an important role so a pivotal role has to be done whenever you visualize any word or whenever you come across any word make sure you think of the scenarios or the possibilities you, you'll be able to use that word right third prefix and suffix would help you for sure so that you can have great bunch of words just in one go fourth point which i remember miss vishali said that uh, whenever you are trying to understand any word go by the root words if not you're not able to get it uh, try to present it or try to practice it over and over again whenever you want to use the word try using and things would be perfect and perfect. as we just said uh, miss vishali i see this a lot many times to my learners that life is all about making choices mm -hmm. and english is all about choosing words so choose absolutely. your words wisely <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely very rightly said i think miss shruti um when i talk about general instances also if we choose the right word we are creating that impeccable version in terms of our impression over the other person we are the speaker the person is recipient when we are able to put across the word rightly and however keeping that very idea that every time you go about having a conversation with someone you need to have that benchmark left on to that conversation and whenever they should always you know, uh, understand or maybe recall those were instances or the moments of joy, or let's say the moments of moments filled with melancholy. So at that point in time, mm -hmm. a person mm -hmm. should always remember you in a way that you have left the benchmark into onto their souls, onto their minds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what better could be using the right word, right time and in right manner. And I think wow. English wow. is a very graceful language to go about with. Because how we come up with this language, apprehension, comprehending, and at the same time, understanding the very context and how to go about it is beautiful in how we are learning the language on a daily basis. Yes. And as you said, using words at right context, that definitely means whenever you are trying to incorporate new word, uh, visualization, of course, help. And even at English Shari, whenever we provide session notes, I hope Vishali Ma'am would agree with me. We try to give the context. We give them a space where they can practice these words. Otherwise, you'll keep on learning words and you'll never use them. Right? So, Absolutely um, right. Yes, that's great. And here, uh, Ms. Karishma says, Hi, Shruti, how are you? I am doing exceptionally well, ma'am. And she says, I'm late. Don't worry, you're not late. It's never too late to start. <laughs> right, Ms. Vishali? And as we yes. say that this live is going to be uploaded on our YouTube handle, feel free to check them out. Every Sunday, we come just for you people to clear the doubts and the kind of response we get it's just amazing we are well with the response with the love you get um see here at english Shari, we provide you with great tutors and right. whenever we come live we get to experience that exact love because in sessions uh mr Shali, we are unable to meet everybody one, one person at a time mm -hmm. but this live right. we get to meet people from all across they come they ask their doubts we are extremely happy to be a part and i must say that you are also a part of our english Yari family now <laughs> right absolutely i would definitely agree to this one point the people who are watching today's live and after this session ends they will be still able to watch this entire live session which will be recorded and uploaded on youtube channel on english shy youtube channel i just wanted to give this one very good answer in terms of the question which has been asked by mr ranjan would you please give us a discount coupon for subscription to english shari i need to tell them that a very instance the republic day it is uh, obviously uh, coming up very soon and speak with freedom 
speak with confidence this is how our motto goes out and 45% discount has been provided from the english jari people should go and check the website for 40 5% discount i repeat 45% discount is huge of course uh, everybody keeps an eye on the discounts what else could yes. be better than that so if yes. somebody wants to use any kind of coupon or the code it is for 26 gen 26 jan so yes they can mm-hmm. also go and subscribe the plans i think that would be the great thing a person is going to do for themselves <laughs> yes absolutely so now uh, it's time to call this off i always feel happy whenever sunday is all around so waiting for next sunday to come till then feel free to write down what should be the next topic for our uh, life because uh, we are here to discuss what you actually require not what we want to teach so feel free to put all those things as this video is going to be there on our youtube handle still you can uh, comment there any doubt any query though we tried addressing most of them but sincere apologies in case we missed any of your comments any of your doubts maybe next time we'll pick it up and we'll be able to provide the best we know right vishali ma'am right very right but shruti just uh, i just need one i think comment section uh, comment i need i'm like going about in the comment section i'm trying to fetch on to that feedback for the session today i think everybody was hooked on for the session and i can see a very good number yes. who has joined us who are watching us on this live streaming and i think it would be best if they would be writing up how was the session today it would be lovely to know and what they are expecting from the english ride platform it would be more great because again if this english ride platform is a fabulous platform to make this every learner to is this language and again one yes. thing i had yeah. only started to speak up in the beginning budding linguist if somebody wants to join the singlish ride platform as a budding linguist we are open mm-hmm. the slots mm-hmm. are open i think they should go and hook up to the discount which has been provided which is again till 26th of january Yes, Vishnu says uh, excellent session here. I can see a lot of people, Vishali ma'am, right from the moment we started the live, they are still with us. Thank you nice. so much. We cannot thank you enough for the kind of love and support you share. I think um, in my sessions, I am able to talk with few clients, a few tutor learners. But when I come to you, I feel okay. It, there are so many learners, and together we are a strong community. Uh, you know, community. English Shari is just because of you, and will remain for you. So as ma'am said. that if you want to start your english journey we are right away uh, sometimes if you need that push a little push in life or a little guidance we are up for you and feel free to come with us thank you so much once again and with the hope that next time you will join us sharp at 7 every sunday and next time we'll have a great discussion again have thank you great... so much for yes go yes ahead, thank ahead. you so much to all the learners who have joined today i know i have been under the weather from past one or two days i can see everybody is able to keep their eyes on the screens and i have been trying to keep myself as low key as possible in terms of my cough cough but still thank you so much for joining today and the love you have showered in terms of the comment section it's again more exciting more uh, as a learning for us how to go about with more sessions and uh, it gives us immense pleasure to share our experience in terms of so many number of experiences we are coming across to the learners and it's all possible because of all of you who have joined in today and uh, i think it's it's a moment of pride and a moment of pleasure True. more makes it together <laughs> yes so with the hope that we'll meet next time sharp at 7 uh, next sunday we we'll leave you today and we we'll leave you with a wish that may you become super fluent in this year 2024 itself thank you bye bye everybody Bye bye